we're going to look at more features of PhoneGap slash Cordova. Uh, remember last time we looked at the in-app browser to load external content, and we looked at uh, the camera. Let's look at a few more things that we can do with, um, with PhoneGap. So we're going to load up the project that we were working on last week, so this will be a good refresher. My project from last week, if you want it, is in the network drive. If you want to use your project, you can. We're going to import like we did last time. So let's go to the network drive again. And you'll see uh, example with last Thursday's date. So I'm going to copy example 1016 to my desktop. Go ahead and get a copy of that. That was our project where we ended up with it last time. I'm going to rename that today's date. This is going to be today's project. So I'm going to put it there on the desktop. We'll go into Eclipse and we'll go to File Import. File Menu Import. We will select an existing Android code into our workspace. And then the next screen says, which project do you mean? What's the root directory? So I'll browse. I left mine on the desktop. Example 1021. So you want to select that. So here I've selected my project. I'm confirming this is the example project. Um, I'm, in this case, I'm not selecting copy into workspace because that would leave a copy on my desktop as well as put a copy into my workspace. So I want to work with the one on my desktop. Notice our projects don't need to be in the workspace for us to work with them. I'm going to leave this on the desktop, so click Finish. And in a moment, we should have uh, the project, the example project, loaded up. Question? Did you copy it from the network drive? Yeah, I did Okay, so we're loading the project. It's in the Package Explorer. Everyone sees it there. Uh, inside of the Assets folder, WW folder, we'll, we have our index file. You want to right-click, open with. But if you see the I these icons, remember, if you see these icons, uh, HTML files with little color-coded um, text, that means you install the plugin, so you can just double-click it. If you didn't, you'll have to do right-click open with. I also took a moment to install the JavaScript um, plugin. So now my JavaScript uh, files have a little JS on them, so you should double-click it. Open up your index file. And also open up your codica.extra.js file. both index and codica.extjs. Again, if you don't see things color-coded, you didn't install the plugins. So during the break time, you can call me over and we'll, we'll get that set up. Now my screen's a little bit cluttered, and also I recommend this for you just to give yourself more screen real estate. We're not going to really use this outline tab, so you can either close it or minimize it. There's a minimize button here. 
That gives me a little bit more breathing room in my coding area. And this is just something I like to do, but it's optional. Um, oh, uh, not yet, actually. Uh, so uh, index and codica uh, ext, what we want to do is add the capability. So this will be really impressive for us with a real device. Uh, if you've got a virtual device, it won't be as impressive. But we're, we're going to tap into the ability to make the device vibrate, let's say, for some sort of alert. You know, uh, for let's say a notification, it vibrates with a notification. Uh, so I want to tap into that. In order to learn how to do that, of course, we'll we'll go reference the uh, the documentation. I'm going to go back to my web browser, back to PhoneGap.com. Developer docs. We'll go look at the section that teaches us how to do vibration. Remember right away it, it takes us to version 3.5 of the documentation and we need to look at 2.90. And the one we want to look at is in the second column, notification. This will be visual, audible, and tactile device notifications. So open that notification section. we have a few methods or, or commands that we can do. An alert box, a confirmation box, a prompt box, a beep. We'll play with that one too. We'll make our device beep and then uh, vibrate. Again, for, uh, for those of us on a virtual device, your, your computer will not shake. But if you, if you have a real device, you'll, you will get some shaking. But when we do beep, it should play some sound. Let's check out what we need to do with vibrate. So click on the, the section here, vibrate, and it'll jump you down. Notification.vibrate, which is basically navigator, dot notification, and then which kind of notification. Dot vibrate, and then in milliseconds, there's one option here. Milliseconds. And one millisecond equals one second, or 1,000 milliseconds equals one second. So in order to make something vibrate, that's the basic code that we need. We just need to figure out how to do it. Let's say, I'm going to look around in my app, what would be a good part, a good way to make it vibrate? <coughs> Maybe when the prompt appears where it says, please uh, customize, remember it asks, what's your name? Maybe also make it vibrate for fun. So let's say we want to do that. We want it to vibrate at the moment that that pop-up box, that that uh, prompt box happens. Looking at our quick example, it's very simple. And then our full example, let's look at the way they did it. I like this example because it shows you uh, examples of everything that you can do with these notifications. Um, so looking at the code here, there's a function show alert, which is basically navigator.notificationalert. We'll look at that later. Uh, play beep, vibrate. So there's a function that they made called vibrate. And it simply vibrate for two seconds. How did they actually use it? Well, there's uh, there's a link, there's a button on screen that says vibrate, and it's got on click vibrate. So then vibrate function is called right here. Vibrate for two seconds. That's going to be our concept. Uh, let's copy then this function vibrate. I'll copy the comment also just so that when I skim my code later I'll see, oh, okay, this is the code that makes something vibrate. So I'm gonna copy that section.
This is JavaScript, so we need to paste this into our Kodika ext.js file. And I'm going to say we'll put it after our code that was the photo stuff. So that would be line. Mm, I will put it on line 90. So the code that you copied, paste it on line 90 or so. So now we've defined. Whenever we want something to vibrate, we just call the vibrate function. We can decide what to do with it once we see it's working. So I'm going to save this JavaScript file. And then uh, let's go find our index, in our index file, the place to put that in. So over on our on our about screen we have a place where we make the prompt appear Two seventy. Um, two seventy. That one runs okay. Yeah, that one runs the customize function. That's what actually makes it makes it go. So, okay, then it looks like what we'll do is we'll put the vibrate. We'll call the vibrate function inside of the customize <coughs> function. All right. So on line two seventy, we see that this the prompt appears when we click on the button and customize function runs. Uh, customize <coughs> is defined back in that Kodika.js file. So let's go back to the JavaScript file now that, now that we've seen it. So okay, there it is. That's the part that is saying uh, let's get the person's name. Okay, so what we'll do is Inside the customize function on line 97, the first thing we'll do, because it's, it's linear, it goes uh, first command, next command, etc., we'll do vibrate, open close parentheses, semicolon. So we'll say this function, when, when the customize function is called, it will then s jump over to the vibrate function, do its thing, and then go over to the rest of the... Of the uh, function, which is to do the local storage, to capture the name, and then to display it on screen. So I'm going to save that, and then I'm going to run it. I'm going to run it on my, on my real device. You'll get the full effect there. You'll be a little disappointed <coughs> on a virtual device. So you'll need to create a run configuration, of course, as we've done several times. <coughs> if you are using a real device, remember I said I, I recommend that uh, if you've got the example project from last time, try to uninstall it first and then uh, install your current project. Let's see here. I've got uh, my app loaded up. I'm going to go to the About screen, Customize. Probably can't hear it, but I'm going to put it on my table. Maybe it'll be loud on the table. Go to Customize. And you probably still can't hear it, but uh, it vibrated. And then it says, please enter your name. It vibrated for 2,000 milliseconds. Two seconds. 
two seconds might be too long, and that's why now that we know that it works, we can we can change it. But if you had a real device, how many of you tried it out on your real device and it worked? Right. Cool. How many of you tried it on your real device and it didn't? Interesting. Okay. Just let's confirm that our code is correct, and I'd like to look because some devices I think don't work with the code. So I'd like to see which ones, perhaps not. Anyone else that you tried it on your uh, real device and it vibrated or not? All right, so uh, it vibrates. Uh, we can do something very similar. We're going to make this a very um, we're going to make this a very annoying button because it's going to vibrate and beep and maybe other things. We'll see. But this is our vibration, very straightforward. And what's written here, this is a lot like JavaScript because it basically is. 
this is all JavaScript, but then what Cordova, what PhoneGap does is translates it to the appropriate internal language to the Android device. It would take this exact same code and translate it to the iPhone device. Yes? Where we, in our customized function where we have line 97 that says vibrate, we, could we have just put in the navigator.notification command yeah. there? Yeah, we could have put this whole line just in here. The reason we did it this way was we put it into a function, so that means anywhere we need to use it, we call the function. Because perhaps not only do we vibrate, but maybe we'll beep. I think that's the way we'll do it. We'll change our vibrate function to also make it beep. We'll do two things at once. All right, let's see about making this beep as well. If we go back to the, uh, to the documentation, uh, we see the example in the code, but I'm going to backtrack up to the top just so that it explains it a little bit more. Uh, I want to go back to the top table of contents here and click on notification.beep just so that it gives me a little bit more explanation how it, what it is, how it works. Um, the device plays a beep sound. So it's navigator.notification, that's the same, but then .beep, parentheses with options, and the option is the number of times, a number a whole number. How many times to beep? I guess from 1 to 900 if you want. And what sound is it going to play? It's going to play the default error sound or notification sound of your device. Um, so... Nope, it's as long as how your, how your default sound is. So if you've got like the Jurassic Park theme, it's going to play two copies of it, whatever long it is. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the, the quick example here. All we need is this. We're, we don't need the whole part that says function because we're going to borrow the, the vibrate function that already exists just to show you that we should be able to use this directly instead of creating a function for it. So copy this part, navigator.notification.beep2. It's going to beep twice. So the classroom is going to get noisy in a moment. But copy that and go back to Eclipse. And I will do, uh, since this should go in order, we're going to have vibration first and then the sound. So after line 93, inside of your vibrate function, it's going to vibrate and more. We can change its name if we want, but we'll keep it like that so we can cut a few corners. Uh, you know, this is doing more than, than vibrating. Maybe we could call this uh, alert or alerts or something. And it will run there. And I want to see how this works, so I'm going to save that. There we go, someone's getting the alert, the beep. I'm going to save that and run it. I'm going to turn my volume up here on my device. So I'm going to go over to the to the about. I'm going to click customize. Two beeps and the vibrate. What's that? It's cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's not a sequential. <laughs> There you go, we're, we're making it beep. Okay, great, it works now. Let's turn our volumes down. <laughs> that was pretty straightforward. Navigator.notification, and we're telling it beep. How many times? Notice we don't really have control of what sound to play. It's the system default sound. We'll look at other code that will allow us to actually play a sound that we want. Right here, it's just the system default beep. And it's, and it's the number of times to play the sound. Twice. We'll do one more alert. Uh, if we go back to the notification at the top, 
We've got alert, confirm, and prompt. And those are very similar to the ones we've already the one we already did to capture this uh, the person's name. For example, if we look over at alert. Navigator.notification.alert, and then several uh, options. There's message, comma, alert callback, comma, title, comma, button name. So you could really customize the alerts. Right now, the alert, when it pops up for the person's name, we were able to select, we were able to make it say, um, we were able to make it say, um, please enter your name, and then the box, and then OK and cancel. We have some controls here. So we have a message. We can write uh, a string here. We can write a sentence that is the message, an alert callback to invoke, invoke when alert dialog is dismissed. So we can have another function run after we've captured the, uh, the name. Title. This is the, there's going to be a little title bar at the very top of our alert box, and we can um, we can make we can edit that here if it's our third uh, option, and then the button name. Instead of it simply saying OK, we can make it say Go. So that's how that one works. So then the full example for that. Notice the full example. Uh, we've got show alert, navigator.notification alert, and they broke it down into separate lines for readability. I like that because instead of it being a long string, which might be harder to read, they broke it after each comma. So they wrote the navigator.notification enter, and then in quotes or double or single quotes, they wrote what's the message that appears? You are the winner. And then comma, new line, alert dismissed. That's a function. Yes, it doesn't have the, par the parentheses again, but again, the documentation defines it this way. Comma, game over. Uh, that's the text that appears at the top of that little alert box. Comma, and then done. Instead of it saying OK, it'll say done. OK, so what does alert dismissed do? It's defined right here. Function alert dismissed, do something. Does something else, like maybe vibrate even longer, let's say. Um, I believe from the from here the ones that are optional are in brackets, so it seems to be mandatory, and that's why the the function is just an empty function that says do something, which does nothing. So let's uh, let's say we want to do the same thing. So here under the full example. Let's copy that whole, uh, I guess we'll copy both, from the, from the dismissed, alert dismissed, down to that closing of the, of the show alert. So here, which will satisfy the alert dismissed, right here, and then over here, which ends the show alert function. Let's copy that. Let's put it into our JavaScript and then play with it. So let's copy that back to Eclipse, and I'll um, I'll paste it on line ninety. So we'll paste it above what we've uh, our vibrate function. So we've got the the alert dismissed. We'll do something with it in a moment. We've got show a custom alert. It says show a custom alert in the comment. Show a custom alert dismissed. That seems wrong. It should probably just say show a custom alert. But it's a comment, so it doesn't matter. What's that? No, it's right here, isn't it? This one? 
No, but that's no, that's no, but this is this is for the whole. Isn't it? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, that's right. That is not a curly brace. That closes the uh, the alert. Yeah, good eye. Actually, I meant to do that. So let's close. Let's close that curly brace. Yeah, so the curly brace closes the function. And then that parentheses closes the parameters of the alert. Okay, so yeah, we're going to make it say you are the winner. We'll change that in a moment and game over and all that. We'll change it in a moment. Uh, and we'll do something with the alert dismissed. But what I want to do is make it actually work inside of our app. Um, this, I can't quite think of a, a reason what what to do with it, but we'll just make it work and then figure out something later. What I want to do is at the bottom of my of my home screen right now we've got that info button. I want to add another button just to make the make sure this works. I want to add another button and call this function when I click that button. That'll give us practice in creating that that button that has only an icon. Uh, so we'll go back to Eclipse and this time we're gonna need to edit the index file. And way up somewhere on the first screen on line 63. Line 63 is the button that um, that makes the About button appear. So we'll create another button right next to it. So on line 64, let's just call this Secret. We'll wrap the A tag around it to make it a link. href set to pound. We're not make, we're not going to make it go anywhere. But I want it to look like a button, so that'll be data roll button. We'll choose an icon and such later on click. And this one was called show alert. Sorry, let me get that out of the way. There we go. Uh, so we will add that. This is on line 64. So now I've got a big button there called Secret. Click on that. Pops up. It says the text Game Over at the top. It then says the some text in the middle, you are the winner. And then a single button that says oh that says done. Click done and nothing else happens. Let me run this on a virtual device. Remember, uh, that's a capital A for show alert. That is case sensitive. So I've got a new button that says secret. I click on it, pops up. There's that game over text. You are the winner and done. They work for everyone. Question? No? Did you see if, uh, if you spelled everything right?
All right, so the last thing we'll do, and then we'll, then we'll take a break, is, uh, well, if we go back to our JavaScript, uh, the pop-up happens, that message, those messages appear, and then there's done, and then nothing else happens. Um, we would have to think about how we would use this. Perhaps in our app, there, there isn't much of a reason to, to use it, but think about perhaps in your app. Here, the example is that you're playing a game, and then time runs out, or you get the high score or something, and this pops up. You're the winner. So that's what this is showing here. That's the text that appears at the top. You are the in the middle, actually. You are the winner. And then text at the top and the button that says done. Uh, so nothing else happens because alert dismissed does nothing, where it says do something. Uh, just for fun, let's put in, back on line 93, let's put in the vibrate, the vibrate function. which will do the vibration and the beep. So now once you click OK, it'll do something. So that's why the callback is, is available to us. We can make this do something else, like uh, display the high score list or other things. And here just uh, we'll, we'll put the vibrate function into the alert dismissed function so that it gets called when you click OK. So I'm going to click on secret, it pops up, you are the winner, and then you click done, and it runs the vibrate function.
All right, so we were exploring here in PhoneGap a few of the alerts. There's a few more we can look at if you want. You can go in, what is the, how does the prompt differ than the basic one we did in JavaScript? Uh, and we've got the confirm box and, and all of that. So there's other things you can, you can do with notifications here. So that was our intro to that. If we wanted to actually play uh, a real sound that we choose and such, there's other ways to set this up, uh, such as media and such. Uh, but for the moment, uh, we've added a little bit more functionality to our app. And again, these are things, it's JavaScript, these are things that only work and make sense uh, on, when they're an app. Uh, a website is not going to vibrate. Uh, a website is not you know, going to alert you in these other ways. So a device has vibration. And a device has other things, such as a splash screen and um, what else are we going to do? Uh, we've done camera and other things. So that's, that's the power of a phone gap. So uh, let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll do more. Um, it's about 7.30, so we'll take a 10-minute break to 7.40, and then we'll continue.